connecting. Welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Ramiro Cavazos. I'm the President and CEO of the United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Today we are joined by our uh, U.S. Administrator, our 26th Administrator, Jovita Carranza, uh, appointed by uh, President Trump. Uh, you all have joined us on an important national discussion to provide uh, the resources from the SBA to Hispanic and minority owned businesses. Uh, this is a very difficult time for our small businesses, but our administrator represents 30 million small businesses. And as a chamber and each of you who have joined us, our chambers of commerce, our Hispanic business enterprises, and of course uh, our corporate leaders and our national partners, this is the first of many calls to put the resources uh, in the hands of our small business owners during this time. So uh, we are here to help and, and thank you for joining us. Uh, at this time, I'd like to hand this over to our administrator, Jovita Carranza. Thank you, Jovita. Hello, Mr. Cavazos and everyone on this call. I appreciate your availability and I look forward to having a meaningful exchange with you. Uh, we have some of the top leadership in the agency available here today to address address your membership and, and uh, all other colleagues that have a significant interest and a particular need uh, during these very difficult times. Um, I'll go around the room first so you'll know the talent and the expertise and the availability that we have. So, Hi everybody, uh, I'm Steve Kong, I'm the acting COO of the agency. I'm James Rivera, the uh, Associate Administrator in the Office of Disaster Assistance. Good afternoon, Alan Gutierrez. Uh, I oversee the Office of Entrepreneur Development. And I'm Jim Villamoria, the Head of the Communications Department here at the SBA. So, so Mr. Cavazos, we really take seriously this particular communication that we're going to share with your, with your people. I understand you had approximately 900 uh, who registered for this call. So I am uh, ecstatic about being able to address, even if it's half that number, but more importantly, if it's this uh, significant number that that was made available, then I I hope the 900 will disseminate this information to another 900, and by the time the day is over, there's 9,000 people that will learn what we're going to share with you. So um, first, let me begin by indicating that our hearts and my heart goes out to those who have been impacted in this particular coronavirus um, situation uh, in every state. And I, I know that they say that there's vulnerable populations, but I believe that everyone in the United States uh, may be at risk. And I, um, I know that many of our families are doing without uh, loved ones and uh, colleagues and coworkers and employees. So our heart goes with uh, those particular uh, communities that have lost uh, some loved ones. And as everyone knows, um, the number one priority of any agency, and as an employer, you're, you're fully aware that it's both the health and the safety uh, of every one of our employees, and as an agency and as an organization as it relates to the federal government uh, who represents the American people, we definitely are um, attempting to execute every safe measure for the protection of our American people. And I know all of you all worked hard to plan your an annual legislative conference. I mean, there's been several conferences that have been canceled, and I look forward to joining you there uh, in the very near future. So unfortunately, at this point, we're adapting to new Circumstances. I just, uh, you know, I'm on a daily call with OMB, the Office of Management uh, and Budget, GSA, as many of you uh, are aware, it's a General Services Administration, and we report on a daily basis. However, I'm on a call with bankers, with the White House, uh, with our local businesses, and all of our stakeholders uh, almost every other hour, if I'm not mistaken. And James has been a really um, asset because he not only is responsible for the disaster, I should call it the economic injury disaster loan portfolio, he also has the, the need to manage his um, 
several thousand employees, as well as ramping up and coordinating efforts with other agencies. And so let me point out that my, my responsibility as the administrator is to help as many small businesses as possible to minimize as what you're uh, facing now, um, your economic disruption. And that has been become a very dynamic environment. Uh, we've always touted in all of our speeches that we are the advocates of um, small business community. Uh, we represent 30 million. And this is the first time in the history of SBA that we will be servicing every one of them. So you can imagine the undertaking that's required. As a matter of fact, James has uh, probably another five or six folders, which represents, I, I, I can tell you the, red, the color of the folder because they're hot. <laughs> and that is uh, additional declarations, state declarations um, for disaster assistance. So we anticipate, uh, and I'll let him give you the information. I won't get into his data, but I will stress that our team across the country and our disaster assistance staff, which I highly regard, and our district offices, which uh, are, not, are not on this call, and our many resource partners, as you know them, which is um, the SCORE and the SBDCs and, and the Women's Business Centers. They are collectively working very, very hard every single day, including the weekends. Um, they're available, although many are on telework, they are telework ready, so they're addressing uh, the phone calls, the emails, um, visiting with some when, wherever possible, hosting numerous uh, webinars, training is uh, occurring as we speak, and federal procurement offices are um, also providing continuous training, so we're open for business. That's, I, I say all of that to say this. We're open for business, and we're expanding our parameters of what we considered quality service to a very robust um, service provider. We've uh, now included um, many other variables into our service profile. So we're trying to expedite Excuse me. Uh, we're looking to uh, expedite the process for small businesses and uh, apply, as I uh, mentioned earlier, the economic injury disaster disaster loans. Excuse me, one second. I will um, now suggest that. Um, Alan, take over the call. I've been called out just for a second, and I'll be back to uh, continue this conversation with you. Excuse me. Thank you, Madam Administrator. Um, on the follow-up, as the Administrator was uh, discussing, certainly for us, um, is uh, um, yesterday the Administrator uh, announced of cutting red tape uh, to make it easier for small businesses uh, in entire states to be eligible for the economic injury disaster loan, which James uh, Rivera's team and uh, we'll, we'll go more in the detail very shortly in that aspect. Um, this is something that as we um, will go into more in detail uh, of, of the latest in terms of the numbers of which states have uh, declared the disaster. As the governors fi finalize the state and territories request, um, um, we're encouraging all of them to work with SBA to ensure that all the requirements are included. Um, the Office of Disaster Assistance, uh, uh, will, like I mentioned, will be presenting information on the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, and we'll be happy to answer questions as we uh, go throughout the process today, this evening, this afternoon. Uh, additionally, myself, um, uh, always available uh, through the USHCC on anything that um, you will need assistance, that we will make sure that anybody in the agency here uh, will be available if you run into any barriers, any roadblocks or anything. Hopefully you don't, but we want to reassure everybody on this call that, as the administrator mentioned, SBA stands ready to assist every single business and uh, answer any question email that is sent to us. So that is high priority for the administrator on that aspect. Lastly, um, before we go, uh, and I introduce Mr. James Rivera and his team that will make the presentation on the uh, 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 information on the economic disaster loan. Uh, encourage everybody to stay on top. 
uh, at our website, sba.gov forward slash coronavirus. Um, we will have all the latest guidance and resources to help small businesses. So on that note, I would like to turn it over back to you, uh, Mr. Romero, uh, 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 and um, turn the floor back to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Alan, uh, uh, for uh, your passion to help our small businesses and our Hispanic-owned businesses and to the administrator and your team. We look forward to your, to your comments. Uh, in advance of those comments from your team, uh, I, I appreciate all of our board of directors that have joined us from the United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, our more than 260 Hispanic chambers from Wisconsin down to the Rio Grande Valley, from Miami, to Seattle and even from Honolulu all the way to Rhode Island. We're very thankful for this strong uh, uh, number of, of uh, business leaders uh, that have joined us for this call to spread the word. And uh, one of our key leaders is our chairwoman, Carmen Castillo, who herself is a, a, a business owner. And I would like to ask her before we hear from, from Alan, your team and James, I wanna thank her for her powerful leadership uh, we want to do the right thing here and put uh, within uh, the next couple of weeks to 30 days the capital uh, uh, that our members need to get some quick results with your help throughout the region and, and break down the bureaucracy with uh, the new systems that y'all have put in place to help uh, our businesses survive. Uh, we only have a matter of days, as you know. So, Carmen, our, our chairwoman, uh, thank you, Carmen, for making time and leading our board of directors. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ramiro. And uh, thank you to the SBA for speaking to all of us today about resources to help during this very critical time. I also would like to thank our Hispanic business enterprises and our chamber leaders across the country. And also, as I said, I'm the chair. Thank you, Ramiro, and the chairwoman. I'm very, very happy and thrilled to be here with you. And Ramiro, I turn this over to you. Thank you. Well, this call is for uh, for business owners like yourself, Codman, and our chamber leaders and our network. So uh, I will hand this back to to you, uh, Alan. Thank you for your support, Alan. You and and uh, and your team with Michael and James. Uh, the floor is yours, and then we'll open it up to questions. and And thanks to the more than 800 people who have joined us on this call today to help get the word out. Uh, thank you, Alan. No, thank you, Romero. Thank you, Carmen, and for all. Uh, the board and, and all of the small businesses online, certainly I'd like to take that opportunity as the administrator mentioned, Mr. James Rivera, who um, has the, uh, the task and, and always comes through um, as he oversees the entire team that is the disaster office. So I'll turn it over to him so he can introduce uh, one of his uh, leaders that will be going over uh, the information uh, as it relates to the uh, uh, more detail on the economic disaster loan. Okay, thank you, Alan. I appreciate it, uh, and thank you, Romito and Carmen. So, the disaster, uh, the, the Small Business Administration uh, is offering low-interest federal disaster loans for working capital to small businesses in designated areas, and we are uh, in designated areas that are suffering substantial economic injury as a result of the coronavirus. Uh, the current process is we're requesting governors to declare a disaster area and five, find five small businesses as a result of the uh, disaster declaration, that, I mean, as, as, as a result of the coronavirus. Uh, the administrator uh, earlier in the week pivoted. Uh, we used to require a small business uh, in each one of the counties, municipalities, and parishes. Uh, she made the decision and we followed along from a policy perspective. You just need five small businesses in the state as a result of that, we have uh, currently uh, 43 states that are we're working through right now uh, that have requested disaster assistance. Uh, we have 30 plus states right now that we've declared. If you go to the sba.gov slash disaster website, uh, you can see uh, what states have been declared and as we go through this process. We anticipate all 50 states will be declared here within, if, it not, if not this week, next week. So we're a bank in SBA, basically. Uh, we, we offer low interest, long-term loans. Uh, what's unique about the SB Disaster Loan Program is it's assistance up to $2 million, and we provide a basically a working capital loan 
to pay fixed debts, payroll, accounts payable, and bills that you could have paid had the had the disaster not occurred. The interest rate for small businesses is 3.755%, and then for nonprofits, it's 2.75%. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we offer terms up to 30 years, uh, and we can make a loan up to $2 million. Uh, so I want to leave time for any questions, but if you go to sba.gov slash disaster, uh, that provides the information uh, that you need from that perspective. Uh, once a small business uh, makes a decision to apply for an economic injury disaster loan, they can go to our disaster loan application portal and they can register and then apply online. 95% uh, of our applications are received uh, and it's in English. If you need a Spanish application, let us know and we have literature also in Spanish uh, for those individuals that uh, would prefer to, uh, to provide a Spanish application versus an English application. Uh, so, Alan, I'll go back to you or Romito. If you guys have any questions from that perspective, we can we can move along. Well, th thank you. At the end, uh, Brianna Vimas, our head of communications, when we get the full uh, team uh, to share uh, the resources available, we'll open it up to questions. Brianna is, is taking all the questions from our participants, and as soon as you all uh, have shared uh, your valuable information, uh, I'll hand it over to Brianna to open it up for questions. Uh, and so uh, thank you all. And Alan, this, uh, we'll bring it back to your team. Great, why don't, why don't we do this, Romero, um, in the interest of time for everybody, but also to maximize the time. Um, why don't we go ahead um, and open it up for the questions that Brianna is getting uh, that got ahead of time or that our folks are um, sending to you guys uh, right now instantaneously that we have, you know, the team here that we can answer any of the questions that, that might come up from your members. Sounds great, Alan. Actually, that, that's a great pivot and uh, we welcome that because I know we have a, a lot of questions. Brianna, can you walk us through that? Thank you, Alan. Sure. Yes. We are accepting questions through Zoom. You can use the raise your hand feature in Zoom and we can let you talk via phone or video. You can also send questions into the chat and we will be reading those as well. Our first question comes from Lily Hill Valletta. I have unmuted you, Lily. Go ahead. Hello, um, first of all, thank you so much for all of your commitment to all of us uh, business owners that are trying to get creative in a very difficult time. So I am in New York and uh, looking at the list of those areas that have been declared, um, I'm surprised to not see New York on the list unless I'm looking something at something that is incorrect. But um, you said that you're expecting all states to have that. How can we stay on top of which states are declared so that we can take advantage of these um, in a timely fashion. So thank you, Lily. Uh, New York, we just declared this morning. Uh, it takes us about two hours to get it up on the website. So it should be up on the website later tonight. Uh, if you want, I mean, I can go through all the states that have been declared if you want me to do that and then we can, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, why don't you do that? Yeah. Okay. And, and I have a that? part, I'm sorry, I have a part to question to that. That was a bit selfish of asking for New York. But uh, some of us in this call are businesses in the professional services space, right? So it's obviously our colleagues in the entertainment industry, restaurant, food, et cetera, are greatly affected. But some of us that are in the world of event marketing or marketing services are, are having some of our corporate clients literally canceling projects and budgets and SOWs that we had in place. So do we qualify as professional services companies to also be deemed as someone impacted when it's really not foot traffic, but corporate decisions that are impacting our contracts? So, uh, Lily, this is James again. Uh, if you are a small business uh, that has uh, contracts that have uh, canceled, uh, the way we do our analysis from our perspective, from when we look at economic injury, uh, we will look to see what impact you've had from a sales perspective. We're not going to replace uh, loss of sales or loss of prof profits, but what we can do is we can help you pay 
your fixed debts, your payroll, your accounts payable, and those other bills that could have been paid uh, had the disaster not occurred. We haven't defined the incident period. Uh, we know that the CDC uh, started gave us a start date of January the 31st. So if you had any contracts that have that have canceled as a result of that, we know that there's been uh, a lot of contracts that have canceled because of closure, so forth and so on. We'll work with your with uh, the business owner as far as uh, what economic injury is present, and then we can we can make a determination uh, based on the needs that you have uh, from uh, from an expense perspective. Thank you. Michael, we've had a few people asking to repeat the websites to go to for the loans. Do you mind repeating that, please? Yes. Uh, the first one, by all means, is uh, sba.gov forward slash disaster. And I can go down the list of states. Thank you, Michael. Yes. Okay. Uh, and I'm sorry, these are not in any sequence here. Um, but we have declared California. Uh, we have uh, parts of California that we will get declared um, later today. Uh, we have Maine, that's statewide. We have Washington State, uh, and we need to get back with the governor's office to get the remaining, the governor's provides with the remaining information for the remaining states. In Connecticut, uh, those four states were declared on the 16th. Uh, we pivoted in our process, and we are trying to get statewide across the organization. But let me just go down the list of states that we have. We have California, Maine, Washington, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Nevada, New Mexico, D.C., Utah, Montana, Delaware, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, North Carolina, Georgia, Indiana, New Jersey, Florida, Virginia, Pennsylvania, Colorado, Louisiana, Arizona, Michigan, New York, Ohio, and I'm going to administrator reference some folders right now. I have uh, four folders with me. Uh, as soon as she signs it, we'll also declare South Carolina, West Virginia, Maryland, and Illinois. We have, we have uh, 20 other states in the queue that we're processing that we received from the governor's office. We generally turn these disaster declarations around in two days. And then once we have these disaster declarations turned around, uh, we will post them on the, um, on the website. Thank you. Our next question is from Monica Mantia. I have taken you off of mute, Monica, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Brianna, and thank you, Ramiro, and thank you to all the SBA team, uh, James and Secretary. Uh, Carranza, a, one, one question that I think is in um, the, the head of every one of us is the short-term need, right? We have small businesses around the country trying to meet payroll, right? Trying to pay costs that are going to be due in one, two weeks. And I, I place the special um, importance to the meeting payroll, right? And so one, one question I have around the loans that are going to be in effect is uh, how long will it take for business owners to process and then how long will the approval process take? And I'm just wondering if there could be a solution of a simpler 30-day cash uh, grant or some sort of simplified way to be able to ensure that our business owners have cash as soon as possible. I'm sure this is a question that comes again and again, and it's not a simple question to provide an answer to, but I'd be very grateful for your thoughts about, you know, how to put cash in hand to meet next 30 days. Uh, and then of course it's the 60, 90 and longer term, but I think that navigating through the next 30 days is something that is in the mind of everyone. Will cash be available by then? Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Monica. Um, one, one of, so, so you're right, the disaster loan program is, uh, generally it takes us two to three weeks to process a loan. Uh, our first declaration was on Monday. Uh, we've had a couple of approvals already, you know, as, as of yesterday. We're starting to get our approvals through the queue. Uh, I know that the administration, and I'm not speaking on behalf of the administration, but they, they have a lot of uh, proposals uh, the, the President and Congress do as far as shorter term, quicker uh, payroll cash uh, opportunities. And, and that's on a different track. Uh, that's not 
in my swim lane, but from the perspective of the the, uh, the economic injury disaster loan program, like I mentioned earlier, it's a uh, working capital, uh, low interest, long term loan, and uh, if there's an ability for a business to continue, to, you know, to manage through the through the next several weeks, uh, our our intent is to provide that that working capital loan during that period of time. Uh, but you do you do you do address or ask a question for a large you know you do ask the right question for a larger audience. Our next question is from Peter Guzman. I've unmuted you, Peter. Go ahead. Hi, can you hear me okay? Yes. Thank you so much, and thank you for putting this together. Appreciate uh, Ramiro and, and, the, and the team very much. So out here in Las Vegas, uh, what a lot of calls we're getting on uh, are the, the idea of pushing our tax filing date out longer because everybody's in survival mode, and doing your taxes is difficult enough under normal circumstances. So is there any talk about uh, helping to uh, push the tax filing date out? Yeah, uh, Peter, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, unfortunately, that's not part of the, uh, the SBA's uh, authority. Uh, but we'll take the question down, and then we can push it up uh, as, as a question coming from, from from this team here. Thank you. Marie Angie Rosario, I've unmuted you. Go ahead with your question. Okay. okay. Lisa Vela, I've unmuted you. Go ahead with your question. Uh, Guillermo Moran, I've unmuted you. Go ahead with your question. Okay, let me read one from the chat. Okay, can you hear me? Oh, yes. Okay, yes, I am here from California and I am a board member of the California Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and also an entrepreneur. Uh, but we have some businesses here that are small business in the area of San Jose that are really getting into bad troubles. And uh, I was wondering if uh, businesses that are not success stories that are in potential trouble for uh, this uh, crisis will, uh, could apply for this uh, loans, right? As well as the business that are not completely uh, successful, but they are still uh, um, uh, uh, doing uh, are uh, alive, but with this crisis, they will completely be wiped out. Uh, that's my question. A any of those two type of business would apply? So we, you know, we'll accept an application from any small business. Uh, you know, just to be transparent, we do credit score. Uh, the applications coming through. I mean, we have a pretty, pretty. A broad credit box when it comes to addressing, uh, you know, the credit ban from that perspective. Okay, but uh, let's say, for example, that uh, uh, the company has uh, some of the partners or owners uh, have very good credit scores, and, and will that be a, will that apply? Hello. Uh, yes, my question is, uh, uh, if these uh, businesses have uh, partners that have very good credit scores, uh, will that be okay to apply? Yes, it would. We would take consideration of all of the, the partners associated with the business uh, to look at our ability to, to have repayment ability for that. So yeah, as James indicated earlier, uh, yes, you should just go ahead and apply. Okay, thank you very much. I really appreciate your uh, comments. Thank you. Our next question is from Mark Madrid. You've been unmuted. Go ahead, Mark. Thank you. First of all, empathy, in some cases, sympathy and always hope. And it's an obligation and honor to partner with the USACC. 
my question is just what was just uh, uh, asked, and it's related to credit scores. I have been bombarded in a good way, in an obligatory way, about credit score requirements. So if you could expand on that one more time for the masses that are on the call, because that is a question. We're on the ground, and we've spoken to over 200 entrepreneurs in the last three weeks, and that is the number one question that comes up repeatedly. Thank you. Yes, obviously, we're going to, for any business, we're going to look at, you know, the principles of those businesses, and we're going to look at, you know, their credit uh, worthiness and their ability to repay. Uh, but we generally look at it on a on a case-by-case -case basis because there could be some contributing factors associated with what the score is. So, you know, we don't give out a particular number or anything of that particular sort. However, we will review that application and looking at all of the associated parameters associated with whatever that score is and make that determination. Are there compensating factors that the entrepreneurs could prepare for in terms of the submitting of their application? Uh, associated with the credit score or just completing uh, submitting the application? Uh, in association with the credit score. Well, again, it's, it's going to be the principles of the business. If it's a sole proprietorship, we're going to be looking at the individual. If it's a, a corporation or an LLC, we're going to be looking at the principal partners associated with that particular uh, type business and making a determination. Uh, again, understand that you know we're not a, a financial institution like a bank or anything like that, so we're not going to look at it as, as stringent as perhaps they would, but we do have to look at it from the standpoint of making certain that uh, we're giving money to an uh, entity that's going to have the ability to repay the loan. Thank you for that. I just think it's important to manage expectations of reality while providing hope and, of course, the, the promotion of this grant recovery. So thank you for your diligent response. Michael and Alan, we received a question in the chat. Can the information to access SBA loans and any COVID-19 updates be provided in Spanish? Absolutely. Uh, we're printing materials as we speak. Uh, in Spanish so that you know our press releases goes out in Spanish any other related material we're also translating into Spanish so yeah we will have that ability okay thank you our next question is from Cindy Ramos Davidson I have unmuted you Cindy go ahead hello Brianna Can you hear Cindy Okay. Our next question is from Luis Rodriguez. I've unmuted you, Luis. Go ahead. Let's just answer. Answer. Hi, Brianna. Can you hear us? Yes. This is Alan. I can hear you, Alan. Okay, perfect. I just wanted to follow up on that question for Spanish material. Um, once we um, uh, finish the call. I'll send to you, uh, all of you, um, so you can disseminate. We have both in English and Spanish, as James and, and Jen mentioned, uh, the information. So we'll we'll send you the one pages. I mean, James and Michael, sorry, um, to be able to for you to be able to send out to all your membership. Thank you, Luis. Are you there? Yes, I am. Can y'all hear me? Yes. Oh, great. Hey, well, thanks uh, again for putting this uh, together. Uh, this is important. Uh, one of my question is, it's actually a two part is how much money has been allocated for this initiative? Uh, I'm sure it's not a blank check, but we also want to ensure we take care of many of our small businesses that we can. And also another part is, um, do you have to be a U.S. citizen uh, to qualify for this? As you know, many of our uh, small business owners are not from origin in the United States, but they're still uh, great uh, business owners. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, the first question I believe you were asking about the, the allocation of funds and, and perhaps the, the amount that we have that we can utilize to uh, give out these loans. I think the, uh, the, the bill that gave us the authority uh, to do this particular loan uh, was somewhat around $7 billion. So that right. in a nest, you want to show? I'm sorry. 
Yeah, again, that in essence would give us the, the lending ability to, uh, for every business that I would imagine that would apply for the loan, funds would be available for us to uh, provide them for that. Uh, yeah, part of the requirement is that, yeah, you should be uh, a U.S. citizen. However, again, on a case-by-case -case -case basis, we have to look at the scenario for which you are applying, and there may be some parameters that we could look at. So we don't want to say no uh, because there could be some mitigating circumstances. So in essence, around that, we would suggest that you go ahead and apply. Okay. Thank you. All right. Our next question is from Mr. Robert Bard. You are unmuted. Go ahead with your question, Robert. Good afternoon, and thank you so much for uh, including us in your in your uh, in your information session. Um, I would like to know the great majority of the Latina business owners that the, the audience that we work with are companies that are um, very small as far as employee base. Um, so when you talk about small business loans, is there any special provision for companies that are in the in the one to ten employees? And also at the same time, the the speed of uh, of, of being able to respond. Um, how how are we going to be able to do that? And to um, um, is is the is the opportunity to apply for loans also put on for people that are uh, self-employed? For this, but I need you to help me on this, and I'll take care of you. Don't yes, worry. for for small um, business. Call me. Hello, this is this is the now. administrator. I heard yes. that. I heard that question, so uh, Robert Bard, I will respond to your question in particular. Thank I you. I just came you. in and I just finished uh, speaking to a thousand people on another call that the White House had. That's why I was bouncing in and out. But now I'm, you have my ded dedicated attention. Let me make reference to what's in, what's already available and what we're working with the banks. Has anyone covered that yet? If not, no, then, um, no. then James has covered all of the disaster assistance uh, portfolio, uh, loan portfolio. And what we're working feverishly for the past two weeks is um, a, a package that would make funds readily accessible, uh, low interest if none, um, guaranteed at different levels, and things as such to address our current condition. What we have in place, as you know it, as the 7A and the Express um, loan and all the other uh, loan portfolios in our Office of Capital Access program, um, we are currently, as I'm speaking now with you, communicating with banks on facilitating immediate uh, fund disbursements and so um, hopefully by, before the end of the day today, we should be, I'm, I'm going to assume, in contact with about 1,400 lenders and um, an entire portfolio of our nation's largest or our world's largest lenders so that we can expedite funds. And no one will be excluded as it relates if it's a self proprietor, if it's a non for profit, it's also um, the small business owner, as well as uh, looking at ways that we can protect our um, contractors, our federal procurement portfolio. We're working through that as well. So, um, it, unfortunately, because of legislation and whatnot, which takes another day to another week, we're trying to work with the um, lending uh, partners to facilitate funds today under our current uh, lending uh, portfolio, the guaranteed, and you know it as the guaranteed loans of 75, the guaranteed loans of 50, to motivate the banks to um, put that money out there for our small businesses. And because we, you know, our goal is not to have any unemployment. We want people back earning their wages, being the strong consumers, uh, we want the entrepreneurs to continue dreaming and, and, and believing that they can start their business. We, we don't want any of that. I always um, say we're on a pause. We're not closing shop. And so we're reinforcing our services, our, our um, systems, 
so that we can handle the huge influx of volume that's going to be addressed once the 50 states have declared. Right now we have about, what did you say, um, James? We have 20-something or 40? 40, I think. We have 30 that have been declared, and we have 42 in the pipeline, and we're waiting on the other seven that we'll have by the end of the week. Yeah, and so I just mentioned to the other group that I was speaking to that we have all augmented our phone center by uh, working with FEMA with another 500, so people will not have 500 people, I should say, without um, having any delayed response. And if, if at any point you are uh, the the small businesses decline. Our district directors and our resource partners are positioned, poised to counsel them and attempt to um, file again. But uh, w without fail, th there'll be some resources. I just can't share with you what OMB, the uh, National Economic Council, and Treasury, uh, what the numbers um, may look like. Many of you have heard Senator Rubio speak to some of them, and we're trying to get as close as we can to those parameters that he's put out there. Thank you, Administrator. Our next question is from Mr. Marcos Juanles from Seattle. Yes. Carranza for personally answering uh, the Latino call. And I have to share with you guys a little bit of what we've done here in Seattle, which as you know, has been very, very hard hit by the by the phenomena, by the myth here. Yeah. And uh, basically we want to, what we've done is we have an active partnership with SBA. And so what we're doing is uh, we are helping our members by directly emailing them all of the things they need to do and how to qualify to the emergency program. And at the same time, we posted, uh, you know, very easy, easy steps to follow in, the, in our website. So they can, if they don't have a reference or they can reference somebody, they can go to our website, to our resource tab, and they can download easily uh, all the information, specifically what they need to do. And uh, yes, the, the, the Spanish kid I see is, is coming along. So that seems to work very well for our, for our members. That's, that seems to be helping them well, just to guide them on a step-by-step -step on what they need to do to apply for, this, for these funds. I wanted to share that with you guys, uh, all, the, all the chambers that are in our same circumstance. So maybe that helps you to, to deal with the phenomenon directly with your membership. Well, thank you. And perhaps we can do a better job uh, from an SBA outreach perspective to, and that's why we, we are scheduling the, the chamber calls, because as soon as we get the information from our um, coordinators on, on, the, on the Hill, I would like to revisit this process so that if there's any questions, um, you can ask them at that point but, or any clarification. But as soon as we get the package, I would um, look forward to communicating with you directly because so many people are glued to the TV and you hear these numbers of 50 billion, 240 billion, 300 billion, 8 billion. I can tell you that we have $18 billion on the table guaranteed uh, for banks to release funds, and we would guarantee those funds. So we have $18 billion available for that, and that has nothing to do with the, what's currently being uh, addressed. It's already appropriated funds uh, that were already uh, prepared for 2020, approved for 2020. Um, so we also have, uh, as James said, uh, some money in the bank as it relates to disaster. But um, we're not – we have available funds to guarantee – guarantee loans when the banks are ready to lend it out. And so as a chamber, I would be calling my local banks and saying, let go of some of that money and what kind of terms can you help us work for our small businesses? Because, you know, they're the ones that would negotiate. Because right now they have up to six months deferred payments. And so if you can ha have them do something better, that, that's what the chambers can lobby with their banks. But right now, they're approved, authorized to defer up to six months without being penalized by the regulators on any SBA loan. Thank you. Our next question is from Mr. Steven Trujillo with the Pueblo Latino Chamber. You're unmuted, Steven. Go ahead. Thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yes. 
Wonderful. Well, I first want to start with my thanks to our good friends at USHTC and certainly Administrator Jovita Carranza for her time today. My question is also along those lines. Uh, we here at the Latino Chamber in Pueblo, Colorado, are receiving some of those same questions about now as we're going through this process, how do I fill this out? And so we're looking for any resources and or mm -hmm. potentially training videos and sessions like this that we could directly link for our businesses to watch and help streamline that process of submission. We're actually working with our local SBDC office to try and put a checklist together uh, that mm -hmm. helps businesses say, here's what I'm going to need to do this uh, SBA loan to help streamline that process. So my question is just, is there anything like that that we're missing right now directly from SBA that we could utilize to share with members? And if this conversation is also happening at a higher level, can there be some coordination between those requirements also to our banking partners, so that if a business is doing it for one entity, it'll satisfy the requirements for some others to help streamline that process as well. That's uh, really good, Steve. Uh, great uh, work that, and good to hear that you have that relationship with the SBDCs in, in your backyard. And, and that's a really good point. Uh, we are working under the leadership of Administrator Carranza. Um, what, something that came to my mind right now as you're saying that, and we'll provide that with Ramiro, is connecting our district directors with all of you chamber leaders and also uh, giving you the listing of all of our resource partners in your backyard and making that connection right away so there's no trying to find who's the right person to connect. And um, I wrote some notes down and we'll, I'll follow up later on uh, with some of the things that you're doing uh, that could be helpful across the country as well with our resource partners and our district offices. Wonderful. What this, what this administration is hoping um, to avoid is for small businesses to go through another weekend not knowing what's available to them. So we're working very, very hard to try to get something done by tomorrow so that, as you know, the leadership of the chambers and the non-for-profits and the advocacy offices that we have, uh, consultants that we have on the line, the last thing we want is confusion and disillusion and so what we're trying to do is narrow that gap uh, before the weekend. So I'm, I'm hoping that we could have uh, some formal announcements uh, before that weekend. We're working very, very hard to accomplish that. Thank you. Our next question is from Gail Smith from Impacto Latino. You are unmuted. Go ahead, Gail. Thank you very much. Uh, and thank you to all for putting this together, incredible information. So my question is, goes um, similar to what has been mentioned a couple of times already regarding how many of our businesses are small enough and uh, or very small and fall below the lending criteria that banks have established. So have you considered working with micro lenders such as Acción who have deep experience in lending to challenge communities and are quick to disperse funds? We're looking at the entities that could handle the processing um, in, in a big way. You know, we've, we've entertained credit card companies, we've entertained the mega banks, um, and if there are some communities like the rural communities or the underserved communities that need quick access, we obviously will, will entertain that, that particular factor. Are you, do you have a network of small banks that are interested in doing that? Is that what the case is? I, well, I like to, a little clarity. Uh, so I, you know, I'm on the board of Acción, which is a micro lender. It's the largest uh, uh, mm -hmm. micro lender in the world, and they're accustomed to dispersing funds uh, quickly to, uh, you know, minority communities. So, ah. you know, I was just wondering if funds could be available to them to disperse, uh, you know, uh, quickly, because uh, again, you know, the the problem is a lot of these businesses are so small that uh, I don't know that they, you know, they have the credit worthiness um, uh, to go through banks, but they're still suppliers of, you know, a, a huge amount of employment in the U.S. Yes, we've um, also considered the unbanked and the banked, and um, 
we don't have all of the particular entities listed as of yet or identified, should I say. Um, we're looking at volume right now, but we also are recognizing that we have the Main Street and the underserved markets to consider as well, and that's up to SBA to, to rationalize. So thank you for your input on Acción. I will um, take that under, under uh, consideration. Thank you. Uh, because we, we, we were looking at CDFIs, right, because they yes. do all the microloans, but the, there's the others as well. Correct. That's correct. Okay. That was the next point. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Our next question is from Mr. Robert Rodriguez. Robert, you're unmuted. Go ahead. Uh, great. Thank you, Brianna. Um, hi, this is Robert Rodriguez, and I, I'm with our benefits group based out of Houston, Texas. Um, and uh, like Mr. Ramiro, I'm also a native of Westlaco, Texas, so I'd like to say hello personally. Uh, thank you guys for putting this session together. And uh, being in the insurance business, uh, I wanted to, we do have clients uh, that run across multiple uh, industries and, of course, multiple revenue levels. Uh, I think that we are all familiar that with minority owned businesses, uh, one of the challenges, of course, has always been access to capital. And I feel that uh, a lot of our clients uh, and, and minority owned businesses alike are going to have challenges by way of credit. Uh, I believe that a lot of them do not have open credit lines. I think that we all understand that many of these small businesses have literally built themselves up and established themselves from the ground up by continual reinvesting of their personal profits. So in these cases, will there be grants or loans? Will grants for them or loans be based on personal credit versus business credit where they may not have any but have a successful business going? And uh, I wanted to know if we could ask, you know, what might be the rules of measure for consideration of funds uh, for, these for these entities and if there aren't any at this time, if, it, if you might make that a priority uh, to establish some rule of measure for these types of businesses and, and industries that, that have simply built themselves up from the ground up and by reinvesting in themselves. We have another question from Cynthia Jaramillo in Albuquerque. Is there any federal grants available or will there be any that become available for minority owned businesses? Uh, Brianna, I am I'm not aware of it. There is some conversation going on now with other uh, other groups uh, that are talking about that. However, SBA on the disaster side doesn't have any grants. However, there is, like I said, some conversation about that. So there could potentially be something coming in the very near future. I just don't have that information as of today. Thank you. We also have several people in the chat asking about the turnaround time for the different loans. For the uh, disaster loan, right now we're looking at anywhere between 14 to 21 days. However, because our queue hasn't gotten too full at this point, I would encourage anybody wanting to apply to go ahead and apply quickly uh, because that will give them an opportunity of their loan being turned around rather quickly. But our average time for getting after we receive the application is anywhere between 14 and 21 days before we get a decision to that borrow, that potential borrower. Thank you. Daryl Higueros is our next question. I have unmuted you, Daryl. Go ahead. Uh, thank you. And uh, thanks for you know, having this meeting. Uh, I want to thank, you know, the UHSCC, uh, Administrator Kranz and Elban for notifying me of this uh, session. So I had a quick question. So um, last week, you know, prior to the announcement of this uh, program for minority businesses, I had gone to, you know, a couple of banks uh, to apply for SBA loans. I've heard a lot about, you know, um, 
working, best pay working with your banking lending partners. So does that mean that those banks are going to be providing that loan? Because one of the, the issues that I ran to is, um, so we've been in business for 19 years, um, but in 2018, we had a, a issue with the project and we took a loss. Uh, we recovered in 2019 and we're on the uh, path to even grow further right now in 2020. Um, I, in order to keep my employees, uh, have not paid myself a salary. So uh, bad timing with this happening, uh, I'm scrambling to figure out, you know, how do I manage that? Um, uh, Cause you know, I can only sustain so much. But uh, so are banks going to be looking at the applications um, or is the SBA going to be looking at it? And as far as salary, do I put a zero since I haven't pulled myself a salary? There's a couple of, I'm sorry, I didn't want to jump in, but I just wanted to uh, reassure you of something. It, this is Jovita, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. There, we have a list of preferred lenders, so I'll answer your initial question. Uh, and any of those lenders would, would understand and probably have very dedicated resources to the small business lending portfolio. The other is an access uh, channel, which is uh, Lenders lenders Match. And is it LendersMatch.gov? Is that the um, email? Because if not, we'll send, it, we'll send the accurate one. But I'd, if you access that website, um, they will match you with a lender in your proximity, and you can counsel, as well as, um, and I don't want to become the bank of the community, but there's also your district offices and resource partners that could assist you in that area. But I wouldn't rule, I wouldn't rule yourself out because of um, you not paying your own salary. Um, I think many of us are in that same boat. Okay. So there are there are options, and and. Um, uh, working capital will be available to all business, small business owners and medium size. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from Millie Herrera. You are unmuted, Millie. Go ahead. Millie, you there? Okay. Our next question is from Sean Salas. You are unmuted, Sean. Go ahead. Sean? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Perfect. Well, it's a pleasure to be on this call and an honor to be speaking with you, uh, Administrator Jovita Carranza. Uh, my name is Sean Salas. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Camino Financial. We're a tech-enabled lender focused on lending to the underbank. Uh, market here in the United in the United States, 90% of our borrowers are Latino, uh, and, and one theme I've heard throughout this conversation has been uh, some concern around the underbanked portion of the small business population. And I would emphasize, and I have data that I'm happy to circulate to you. In fact, I was just on a call earlier today with Alan um, speaking to us, and I'll definitely get that report in his hands. But you know, when we're talking about the Hispanic small business market, we are talking broadly about an underbanked population. Um, I like to think you know, we're focused on the bottom 98%. You know, there's only 2% of these Latino businesses that ha generate over a million dollars in revenue. And so given that point, um, I'd like to add one question beyond you know, distribution partnerships through like Acción, CDFIs, and other banks, which is more on the question of capacity deploy capital at, at scale. Um, my concern is that, you know, we need to move a lot of money in a very short period of time. I think it's not a question of weeks or months, it's a question of days. So what is the SBA doing from a capacity building standpoint to distribute funds at unprecedented volumes uh, relative to historical levels? That's why we have explored you know, what would be easier through Social Security, IRS, um, commerce, grant programs, and the best vehicle to disperse to small businesses is still considered SBA. And so what we're doing is ramping up our operations and, and it's cementing 
really solidifying our relationships with our um, financial institutions because they have the scale, both small community banks, subsidiaries, as well as um, uh, their, their huge um, depository. So we're working with also regulators so that as they release funds liberally in some cases, that they are not penalized. So it's a whole gamut that we're looking at, not only available funds, and, and I would appreciate you sending that list to Ellen so that I can also bring it to um, some of the discussions, sessions that we have, so that no one is overlooked and um, that no one is going to experience any greater delay because of a $1 million threshold versus a $10 million company. Um, this is about getting everybody back um, whole, not whole uh, on day one, but definitely um, transition from zero um, activity to back um, to where they're not only consumers, but they're paying their, they're paying their bills. Like I have a lot of, con a lot of uh, emails coming in about leases, about payroll, about um, inventory, and um, you know bills on receivables as well as um, commitments on on heavy equipment. So we're looking at it all, and uh, your input would be greatly appreciated. Thank you Thank very you. much for your time. Thank really you. appreciate it. You're Administrator Carranza, thank you. This is Ramiro, and I wanted to thank you and your team for uh, your thoughtfulness, your time, and your sincere responses to our questions. I, I also wanted to share that our administrator is from the great city of Chicago, and uh, we have uh, quite a few people on this call from the state of Illinois, including our colleague Jaime de Paulo, the great CEO of the Illinois Hispanic Chamber. So uh, Jovita, thank you for you and your team. I, on behalf of the United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, our chairwoman, Carmen Castillo, and our, our hundreds of chambers and our, our board of directors and many of our corporate members and Hispanic business enterprises. I know that uh, we're all in this together with you and, and uh, we will work directly with your staff in the regional offices and uh, thank you for your passion to put uh, the relief as quickly as possible in, in the hands of our small business owners. Uh, we have many people with questions uh, and it, we will forward those questions for those of you that were not able to ask uh, of uh, the administrator and her team today. We have reached uh, uh, the point in our call uh, of a full hour and two minutes. Administrator, thank you for your commitment to public service and, and to our minority business community. At this time, I would just like to ask you or, or anyone from your team uh, for any uh, final uh, remarks and, and then uh, we uh, will uh, continue the conversation uh, after today. And, and we stand available at the United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce to be a voice for small and minority businesses and women-owned businesses and and we're very dedicated to our members and, and the work that you do. So, so Madam uh, uh, Administrator, thank you and your staff. Any final thoughts uh, as we come to a closure on our, our important call? Yes, I think everyone on the call should know that this administration, um, we're working in a very unified manner to try to address every issue that our small businesses and our overall business sector um, are, is experiencing, and every family, as uh, every family in their household, and every employee that is very concerned right now that that's not working and that is, um, you know, at home. Just, I just want to emphasize that this administration is very committed. If you if you recall and reflect during your quiet moments, besides following everything that CDC is 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 claiming we should be doing. And I, and it's of great importance. Yo conozco la familia latina y hay veces que dejan los niños corriendo por donde quiera. Ahora tiene que tener mucho cuidado con esos niños y los abuelos. Pero aparte de todo eso, we are very committed to the small business. If you notice and, and have heard the president always say, SBA, small business concerns, we're on it, we're committed. And so I, all I can do is uh, reinforce that message. So thank you very much for your trust and your confidence. And we will get uh, through this together. 
uh, and hopefully we can get a message out by tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you, Administrator Carranza, to you and your team. We all know that small business is big business in America and at the United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. We want to thank all of our participants and our staff and our board leaders for putting this together. And, and we look forward to talking to you soon. Muchísimas gracias, Administrator Carranza, to you and your team and everyone on this call. We look forward to talking to you soon.